here, assistant coach. How are you guys doing? It's uh, me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Coach to Glory. It's only the third episode of our journey right now, and we are right at the beginning, but we have found a couple of players already that we have fallen in love with within this team, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am because I'm having a great time playing with 60-ish rated players. It's a completely different uh, experience to what we had with Barcelona, with the Ansu Fati's of this world. So, if you guys are enjoying this Coach to Glory, I nearly said Road to Glory because I've been doing so much stuff for that one, by the way. Uh, link in the description down below, my FUT channel. Um, if you are enjoying the Coach to Glory, make sure to support the video by hitting that like button and also subscribing if you are new leave a comment down below if you have new ideas because new ideas from you guys get implemented immediately here is a new fan objective added into the list flip the script it is where i have to get 55 goal difference a plus 55 goal difference compared to the in real life performance of Olesund last year where they can where they had a minus 55 so that is an amazing full uh, objective that i never had before so i really like that one thank you so much chris morgan for that objective I appreciate you my man and also if you <laughs> if you paid attention you would have seen that i actually uh, follow through Eric Stave, his, um, his uh, comment here where he says, Alesund is pronounced with the Norwegian uh letter instead of, uh, so it's Olesund instead of Alesund. So it's Olesund, like Holland. That's how per people pronounce his name, right? So every time I have to do this face, Olesund. <laughs> so I hope, I hope I get it right from this point on. I probably will mess up a couple of times, but hey, I'm, I'm just another human being, right? Maybe I'm not though. Maybe I'm just a lizard. Now, also, after the scouting session yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, there was a comment coming in from Bart Olsen who says, maybe buy Odin Thiago Holm. He's a big talent from Norway. He chose Thiago as his middle name because Thiago Alcantara is his favorite player. Now, I don't really know if I should believe that part of the comment. If that's actually true, that's insane that uh, someone actually changed his name because he liked this football player. But... We're going to go ahead and start scouting this man. The reason why I didn't scout him in the first place was because I thought I have a cam already in Sanchez and this guy is a cam as well. So I decided not to scout him, but maybe he'll be usable as a sentiment depending on what his stats are looking like. So we're going to start scouting him from now on. The new Thiago Alcantara from Norway. In the last episode, surprisingly, Mete has finally managed to score a goal for the team. Um, and uh, it was it was really something that I just didn't expect. It, it, he has 50 shooting, and he's one of the slowest players on the pitch, despite it saying he has 75 pace. He doesn't feel anything like that. Maybe it's because his dribbling is so bad when he's on the ball. But there's a comment that said, uh, who else realized that Mete has better defending than shooting? He actually has 50 shooting and 50 defending. I mean, even if I put him down here, he gets a minus six. So he's not actually a left back. I was kind of hoping, oh, maybe he is a left back. But then he actually turned out not to be. I could as well just play Olaf Son at left mid. He probably has the same amount of ability up there than he does at left back. But we're going to keep it the way it is right now. We've seen Sanchez perform outstanding alongside Mambimbi. Both the guys have been doing really well and banging a lot of goals in. So the team is slowly coming together in terms of the top performers. We're seeing Sanchez, Mamimbi, and Castro at the top. And then Nordley has been doing well as our midfielder. I really enjoy him as a box-to-box a -box midfielder at the moment. So maybe someone to keep an eye on for the future because that guy is also quite young. Now, today we're starting off with a match against Hargesund. Now, this is in the cup. I want to see how good that team is. They are currently 12th in the league. Normally, we do win against those types of teams. What I love the most about Coach to Glories is that you get to experience completely new teams, completely new players, and players that you would never try before. I want to ask you guys in the comments down below, what's the most exotic or the most exciting career mode that you have done in your career of playing the actual game mode? So let me know in the comments down below. We do win here with Snow getting the goal. He's our right back. 57% possession. Seemed to be quite a boring game. Well, I know which game wasn't boring. Liverpool smashing Arsenal. It was beautiful to watch. And Liverpool is back at it again. We're actually 
looking like a decent team again. Fabinho has been exceptional ever since he has been moved back into CDM. And Liverpool is back on fire. I am so happy about it. I am very hopeful when it comes to the game against Real Madrid coming up. I can't wait to see how Liverpool will do there. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below of those matchups. Who do you think is actually going to make it into the semi-finals of, um, of the Champions League? Let me know. Or actually the quarterfinals. Sorry. Who's going to make it through in your eyes? I can easily see Liverpool go through. I can see Chelsea go through. Manchester City and Bayern Munich as well. So um, it's going to be interesting to see those matchups in the future. There's definitely a little bit of a stamina issue within the squad that we have. Because even after one or two simulations, you can see Mambimbi, Bizoza and Olafsson struggling. Um, so definitely the stamina factor is an issue. And we lost against Start, who only were 12th or 13th. I'm very surprised about that one. So um, that's not an ideal match for us to have played ourselves. So I thought maybe we'll just move on. But hey, we're going to go ahead and play against whoever is in the top six. That's that's the goal that I've set myself. And we're up against Brown here, who are 14th. After those games, we're currently actually third. 17 points on us. Molde has lost two games this season. They're starting to drop points. And at the same time, we are dropping points as well. And that's not really ideal. Rosenborg is catching back up. They want, to, they want to get into the mix. And Bodo is the team that has won the title last year in real life. So we got to be careful with all these teams around, surrounding us. I definitely want to finish in the top three. I want to give Alessund the chance to go ahead and play Champions League football in the future. I want to leave the team as a coach that has given them something special. That's what I want to do. Now, against Brand, you can tell that, again, a couple of players are really struggling. And uh, the issue now becomes, who do we even play in these positions to get the best out of the team? I think we just play the same dudes again. There's no chance to play someone else. And maybe, just maybe, we might get a double loss here. Back-to-back -back horrible games. No, it isn't. Mbimbi steps up in the 55th. Castro gets the goal in the 20th minute. Taylor has done well for himself to score. They had more possession, but we have played counter-attacking football. Two shots, two chances, two goals. That's more like it. Now, guys, we're getting into a spot where there's only a couple of games left until the transfer window. But take a look at this. We're up against Salzburg, and then it's Molde, the best team in the league. And we are up there. Wait, what is happening with Molde, man? They're getting smacked around. Why are they so bad right now? We are on 20 points. They're on 21. Somehow, they're struggling big time. You've squat monthly report. We have the um, goalkeeper, Carvajal, who finally can come out of the youth academy. He actually turned 16, which means that we will promote him to the team immediately for him to become our main goalkeeper. I never thought that we would have him. I thought Cetra would be the guy that we would use for the entire season, who I really like. How tall is Carvajal? six foot six oh yes i like that a lot he is immediately higher rated than cetera a new massive talent has come into the squad an argentinian goalkeeper i can't remember any good argentinian goalkeepers that come off the top of my head right now i can only think of like romero is the last one that i remember playing for them is there anyone argentinian goalkeeper that was actually incredible I can't think of anyone. The most defensive player that I can think of as an icon for Argentina is Zanetti at the moment. So let me know in the comments down below if there was ever someone that was like a big goalkeeper from Argentina. But Carvajal takes over. The youth academy talent has now jumped into the team. And now we have two of them. Sanchez and Carvajal in the squad. Those are things that we love to see. And I think Carvajal has a lot more potential than Cetra, who has done well, by the way. Cetra has done really well. But now we actually are looking a little bit more into the future of the team and bringing him in. And uh, Carvajal, if he does get a potential change, could be huge for us in the next team as well. Now, for this game, I actually took Sanchez and a couple of others out of the team. I need them to be fit for the game against uh, Molde. And sadly, we just don't have the squad depth to save as many players as I would like to. I am fully expecting a bad result here, but can we somehow get at least a draw? No, we actually lose, and that's what I expected. I am slowly feeling the impact of the tight schedule this season. We definitely should be bringing in new players in the next transfer window. Molde is now four points ahead of us, so if we do beat them, 
we are going to be just one point behind them. So here goes the biggest game of the episode. Let's jump into it. All assumed against Mulder. Sanchez is fully fit and the rest of the team is looking okay as well. I am ready for this game and I hope Mulder is ready for the onslaught that we're about to bring to them. Carvajal up to a 66 already. Get in. If you look into the Norwegian league, Mulder has most of the biggest talents in that league or in the nation, technically speaking. So we are up against a bunch of Norwegian beasts here coming up against us. I am desperately hoping that at home we can have some sort of impact with the fans uh, pushing us on. I kind of wish that there was something in this game where when your fans kind of get like really loud and they, 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 they push you on that your team gets like a slight boost and it only happens in moments where it's really fitting in and it only happens at clubs that actually have like really traditionally huge fan groups that are extremely supportive no matter what happens. So uh, just something like that to include the fans more into the gameplay. I think it would be a good thing. What do you guys think about it? Uh, obviously only for career mode, not really for ultimate team. Stuff like that, random stuff like that um, could be seen as match fixing and stuff. And people would scream scripting, scripting every time the opponent's fans somehow start to chant louder and louder and their defense all of a sudden is completely out of shape. So uh, yeah, that's not something that you want online. As Mulder gets the first chance here, you gotta be super careful with these boys. They are even skillers and they are good finishers. 1 0 to Mulder. It's a good goal, man. I can't really complain about anything there. I tried my best to get as close as possible. Great passing play. Three passes and they are through. And that shot is just pure quality coming in into that bottom left corner. And for the first game, off Carvajal, he does concede immediately. I don't know if he could have done better in that position. If we want to challenge for the title in any moment during the season, we have to win this game. So I have to score at least... Oh, yes! I was about to say three goals to win this game because I was fully expecting them to score there. Great save from Carvajal. That's more like it. They are playing some incredible football. It's really hard to get onto the ball. And whenever we do... I feel like we're always in like 1v1 type of situations and just the skill moves and stuff sadly not working on this FIFA it makes it so hard to get past people uh, when you don't have the most outstanding and most pacey players up front that should have been a good tackle from us and it is it turns out to be now we're going to use this right hand side of us to make that run with Castro in behind these are the types of situations that we need to use to our advantage we have numbers moving forward Sanchez, come on. Ah, man, the defender pays a lot of attention there and gets it done. Bizoza at the near post. He can win this. I believe in him. No, he can't. Well, a <sighs> few good moments not resulting in anything. Snow, Castro, Castro, come on. Come on, Castro. Make it happen, man. Ah, he couldn't. He couldn't do anything there. I was about to sneeze as well at the same time. I just felt it in my nose. 1-0 down, all the student is struggling. We don't necessarily have the most stamina, especially our left-hand side seems completely tired. We have to play it more down the right or down the center in order to be able to get through. As we do get the ball with Bizoza here, can he tank his way through? He tried, and is that a pen? It's a penalty given away. Molde has fallen asleep at kickoff, and we do get a chance to score now. Who is going to take the penalty? Who is the best penalty taker? 68 penalties on uh, Castro. We have uh, 61 on Nordley. Sanchez can't take him at all. So I guess we're going to take it with Castro, boys. Come on, Castro. You got to put this into the back of the net. Get in, Castro. 1-1. One, one. All of Sundi's back into the game. Molde did not expect this to happen. Bizoza tanking his way through and getting taken down just around the box to be enough for a penalty. And we do finish it bottom right corner. Now we're back into it. Now we need to work a little bit harder defensively to make sure that those passing plays don't happen around our box so we can actually go ahead and maybe try and win this game by scoring another, another one. Um, sad thing is we don't really have any substitutes to make that difference. So in the next chance to win though, which is coming up after one game after this one uh, we definitely have to get ourselves some backup players for the bench that can be impact substitutes nordley 
Nordley plays it to Sanchez. Nordley again. I see an opening. Great pass. Mete, he scores. Mete has scored another goal with 50 shooting. He has done it again. He scored last episode and he scored again this time. This guy wants to prove himself to me. That's what he's trying to do, huh? I see him. Nordley, great, great pass. Did not expect that at all in that position. Uh, it's a good move from us from the right to the left of the pitch. Isak Dibig Mete has scored his third goal of the season. He's only 17 or 18. So as I said in, in one of the episodes, I said we got to give him the benefit of the doubt and see how he actually does throughout the season until the next transfer window. And right before the next transfer window comes up, he might just secure his spot in the team because he's doing bits right now. And he steps up in the biggest game of the season against a team that is at the top of the league. If we win, we're going to be one point behind them. Then it comes down to our performances against the other squads, which just hasn't been consistent enough. But we hopefully will be able to sort that out as well. well let's make some changes. We need some changes desperately. Uh, we're going to bring on Hauge on the uh, left mid position. And I'm going to bring on Tafjord down that left back position because we don't really have any other choices. And... Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, we can bring on Uzo. Uzo can come in for CDM. That was a beautiful tackle. Here goes the run off Mete again. No, it's Hauge this time. Hauge just coming into the game, obviously. Back into Nodley. And we score again. It should have been called offside because Sanchez was in front of the goalkeeper, hindering him from getting to that shot properly. But it's 3-1 against Molde. This team has stepped up exactly when we needed them to. Incredible performance. Great comeback. And this is the biggest moment of the season. This is the moment where we actually do showcase. Hey, Mulder, we're not going to let you run away when this league. We are going to be chasing you down until the end. And this is a, uh, the, not a, the third loss of uh, Mulder if they actually end up losing this one. 75 minutes in, two goals ahead. I am confident, I will have to say. Oh, here goes Sanchez. Sanchez. Come on, Sanchez. Stop and wait. There we go, Sanchez. Beautifully done. Mambimbi inside. Can he score one as well? Mambimbi, man. Everyone's get it, getting involved and is scoring. And then that's the finish you pull off. Have you seen the center midfielder? His shot? It was powerful. It was strong. It was everything that you need in that attacking position. And you just came up with that one. Oh, there goes Mete again. No, it's Hauge. Sorry, Hauge, the striker coming in as a substitute. He's going to pass it across. And that's going to be the easiest goal Mambimbi has ever scored in his life. That makes it 4-1. Good stuff for Mambimbi there to be in the right position at the right time. Runs in behind, but also Hauge has the left mid. Has had amazing positioning. So a really good um, option uh, down that left-hand side. If we do need a substitute for Mete and we don't want to sub off Mambimbi, we can use Hauge, the striker, as a player to put into that left midfield position. And here goes Sanchez again. Incredible pass. He tried. Oh, big mistake by the defense. Mambimbi. Go on then. Oh, that's bad. That is bad, bad, bad. You got to do better than that. That is abysmal, Mambimbi, man. Two big chances wasted today. You need to do better than that. But the game is done. We don't need to do better than that. 4-1 victory against Mulder in a very unexpected fashion. At first, they were doing extremely well and scored a beautiful goal to start off with. But we actually stepped up our game. We got it done in the end. And the substitutes surprised me. Hauge was good. After that massive victory against Molde now, the team has had a little bit of time to recover. Uh, Mambimbi and Sanchez still not at full strength, though. Um, but the clear issue is that we do need players off the bench. So we're going to desperately focus on players that can come off the bench. We need wingers. We need attackers. We need fast players to have an impact when playing against opponents where we are struggling and we need that extra support. But happy that Mambimbi had scored the goal. He's currently on six goals at the moment. We need him to be the top scorer, as you guys know. So he's not too far away from Ekrem, who is the top of their team of Molde. Uh, it's only a one point gap now and i'm looking forward to that now i'm gonna get past this game and we're gonna get into the january transfer window not the january transfer window the july transfer window and uh try our best there now i am expecting at least a draw here we have one against them in the cup 
And there you go. Stalinio and Balkan Nordli have both scored. Stalinio coming off the bench sometimes steps up big time. And this time he gets another goal. What's his rating? Who the hell is Stalinio? I don't, I don't even realize who that kid is. Who is it? Who hell? Who is Stalinio? I don't have a Stalinio. Oh, it's Sethre. It's him. He is Stalinio. The captain of the team has scored that goal. I was about to say, like, some ghost is scoring my goals. At the same time, we also have the scout report coming in for Odin Thiago Holm. He's a 61 rated cam with 61 athleticism, 58 technical ability, 58 passing. Not the best defending, but not too bad either. He could play sentiment in my eyes. And um, I'm interested in that. We could probably bring him in as a player for the center midfield position. So we would have to rework him around. And he only costs one mil, so it's not, not too bad. Now, I wanted to get this kid. Maybe let's see if we are able to get him in this next transfer window. Uzo is now gone. As you guys know, we let him go uh, during the season. So he is not with us anymore. And I think for the youth scout report, I can get rid of both of these guys, release them. I don't see any point in keeping these youngsters in the team because we're going to be gone by the time they turn 16 anyways. So we're going to release them and make sure we don't get that message at the start of every month again. But we are ahead of Molde. They only got a draw and we are now first. But that is not enough for me. I need to improve the team and I need to find some players that are going to help us. Uh, I need some attacking substitutes because right now what we have is we have a left back, we have a right back, we have a goalkeeper if necessary, and we have a sentiment here at Odvin. We have Dior, who is a striker as well. And then we don't really have anyone for the, for the rest of the team. We need wingers, especially um, as substitutes. So that's something that we're going to work for right now. And Haugen has improved as a player quite a bit. And I do like him as a substitute for Mambimbi now. So um, I need someone to play left mid or right mid as someone that can come in, pace past the defense and play that ball inside for us to score a goal later on into the matches. So first of all, let's see if we can sign one of the players that we actually scouted. Sahrawi was the main man that I wanted and we're still not able to sign him. Now, um, Seda has grown to a 67 as well. Both of them have a plus two on them. 2.4 mil for Seda. He would take over in the starting lineup over Mete, and then Mete would be a substitute then, which I wouldn't mind. Uh, he is okay enough as a substitute. This would be a big signing for the team. This guy we know has great sprint speed and all of that. He is 18 years old. He is from Norway. He has 75 dribbling, speed dribbler trait as well. Someone that we can trust in for the future of the club, but it's going to cost us quite a bit. So... Let's see if we can make this deal happen. And he's also not available. So every single Norwegian talent is not available. That's sick. Thanks, guys. Well, I just found myself an incredible looking player that is potentially going to be incredible for this team if we do manage to sign him. It is Southend United's Terrell Egbry. He's a right midfielder who is five foot four tall giving me all kinds of Nakajima vibes. If you guys remember Nakajima in our previous career modes, I am all for Egbri right now. I want to bring him into the squad and see how he plays. He's a 19-year-old from England. Let's see if we can sign him up. We are going to be having... Uh, we will have to spend at least 1 to 1.5 mil on this kid, I think. But initially, I'm going to offer them 1 million, see what they say, add on a sell-on clause of 5% and hope for the best. Hopefully, they don't ask for too much for him. They want 1.2 million with an 11% sell-on clause. I think that is completely fine because that leaves us with 1.3 million to make one more signing. Egbri is the man that we want to bring in. We tried the Norwegian ones. Both of them we could not bring in. So we had to look somewhere else. The first signing outside of Norway has happened. Egbri is the one. Actually, no, Mambimbi is outside of Norway as well. He's the second player that we are now bringing in from outside. And guys... I will show you his stats and you will look at it and think, oh my lord, what is this guy? So, let's negotiate a contract for this young man and make sure he joins into the squad. I am expecting him to be, let's say, rotation first. I kind of want to see what his reaction is. He's fine with that, which is good. He doesn't have a real face, but he does have his hair cut, so 
At least that's one good thing that they have managed to do, managed to do here. We're going to give him a four-year contract, which he will probably accept as well. Probably was looking for a five-year deal. Uh, no release clause is about perfect. And on top of it, he only wants 900 euros a week. Ah, so cute. Let's go ahead and sign him. Egbri is now in our team. I am excited to show you his stats. I've never played with this guy in FIFA, so I'm very excited to see how he's going to be. He's 63 rated, so that would mean he would actually overtake Mete in the team. So let's put him in there. Just actually, no, no, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's take Dior out and bring on Egbri. And look at this now, guys. He has 90 acceleration, 91 agility, 91 balance, 90 sprint speed, 71 stamina. It's all that I want physically, right? It, physically, he looks incredible. So what we want to try and achieve with this guy is put him on the left, right? Put him on the left, have Mete coming off the bench as a substitute and try and have an impact that way, which he, I genuinely think, could along with Haugen. So we do have two good offensive substitutes now. Mete has kind of proven himself. Egbri now, what we need to do for him is go into the development plans and try and improve his weak foot. We need to make him a better uh, left footer than he is right now. His left foot is currently only three stars. So we need to change that immediately. And that is going to take us only 13 weeks, which is along the way going to be improving his uh, finishing, uh, which is also good. And then also his dribbling because agility, balance and everything is about insane about him. And then reactions and dribbling and ball control are quite low. So we will work on those stats to make him feel as responsive as possible. You know what else I just realized? We don't have a single backup center back. We have Hall and Tafjord for uh, left back and right back, but we don't have a center back. So it's about time we sign a new one. For center back, there was a player that I was interested in initially. It's Hegheim. He is out of our budget, basically, but I will still try and sign him up if we can. We're going to offer a transfer fee of what's like the maximum that I could maybe offer 1.3 mil, right? We're going to go 1.3 mil with a sell on clause of 15% and also a player swap. If I have anyone available, goalkeeper, I can't do fullbacks. I could offer them tough yards, but then again, I do need a backup left back. So that would be a little bit of a silly move. Center backs, I don't have anything available. Midfielders, we could maybe offer someone. I mean, this is the only guy that I really have. Christopher Odvin, maybe. And then when it comes to strikers, we do have Dior, which I wouldn't mind letting go of him. I'm going to put him into the deal. See what they say. I'm not, I'm not too sure if they're going to even negotiate with me, but I would love to. And it's going to be a tough negotiation. So they want 1.7 mil, which is completely out of our budget. <sighs> Let's go 1.4. 1.45 and see what they say. That leaves us with 11k on the wage budget, which is good enough to work with the team. 1.45. Come on. Come on, man. I know he's worth 1.6. I, I really want this kid in my team. I think he could be a great player for the team. And he would go into the starting lineup immediately. And we're going to go ahead and offer them 1.55. See how that goes. Maybe that is going to get them to be a little bit more keen on this deal. Here it goes. Give us Hegheim. I want him in my team. 1.6. I think we negotiated really well here, guys. This is the last bit of business that we can possibly do. I will accept it. And I will go into this season with basically no money left at all within the squad. But I think it was the right choice for us to go ahead and bring this man into the squad. Hegheim is someone that I want in the squad. He's 60 uh, five rated, which would improve our starting lineup. So that's another boost of confidence to the defense that is already doing okay. Um, Carvajal has had a great debut. I liked his performance quite a lot in that first game. And obviously the other boys in the squad, Olafsson, especially the left back, I've liked them a lot. So if we can slot this guy into the defense, we're looking pretty good. Only 500 on wages. That's fine with me. Egheim is now a center back for all the suits gets in he joins in immediately and we will move him over to that center back position pedersen would have been a great signing but we just didn't have the money for something like that now this guy's 27 this guy's only 19 you know what's about to happen we're going to take off the 27 year old and we're going to bring on Hegheim. and sethre goes onto the bench 
as a substitute now. I think we now have a much, much stronger bench with Haugen, Mete, Hatlehol, and Setre. Actual good choices. And of course, Nenis as well. So we do have a good players coming in. 69 pace, 65 defending, 69 physicality. He's six foot one tall, high defensive work rate. That is how I like it. So let's make sure that we give him the right de development plan to uh, enable him growing as much as possible this season as well. This season as well. He has showing great potential on him, which is good. Uh, we'll go ahead and improve his weak foot and improve his defensive stats along the way. Funny thing is, the transfer window is open for two months. So if we do want to make some more players, uh, if we do want to make some more <laughs> signings for the team, we can. We had a transfer offer for our goalkeeper, which I missed out on. The 16-year-old got an offer of 2.5 mil from Yeni Malatya Spor, my dad's former team. Um, that is not going to be a deal that we are even interested in. Now, obviously, now the captain is going to be quite upset about not playing all this time, which... It's not really ideal, but I'd rather have the youngsters playing as a team and improving as a pairing. Hansen has gone up to a 63, so we can already see some growth within the team. Sanchez up to a 67, Castro to a 70, Egbri is on that 63 still, but I do expect him to do really well in the next matchups. We're going to go ahead and uh, finish off with this game today. Alisund up against Odd. I always loved that team name, Odd. Is, the, is it like a... A brief uh, abbreviation? Is it an abbreviation or is that actually their name? Odd. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Here we go, guys. Let's see if the new signings have a good impact on the team or not. I'm going to watch the game. This one I'm going to watch and step in if necessary. They might score here. They might just score here in this position. We do get the ball away. I am a bit scared of our team losing here. We're going to move forward in numbers and take over this attack because I feel like there's something in it. I feel like there's something in this attack, boys. The pass. The move. The pass again. The lob. Oh, the ref blows the whistle. Back into the simulation we go. Oh, I want to take over. I want to take over. Come on. Egbri. 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 Yes. I wanted to take over to score his first goal myself. Gets in. The new player for the team. Steps in. Right moment, right time. He scores a goal for us. 1-0 up against odds right here. I just wanted to feel this energy when we move in. See him. See how he does. The debut or the debutant has scored a goal. He has done really well. And I think that will take us, hopefully, over the line. It's a 3-0 victory. Bizoza and Mambimbi getting involved as well. 70% possession. Odds, you suck. With that being said, guys, our league position at the moment is extremely impressive. But we have two or three teams chasing us down big time. We are not allowed to drop any points. We got to be careful, but I'm pretty sure we will drop a lot of points throughout the season for sure. And we do get a transfer offer now for two players. We have one for Mete, who has actually earned his right to stay in the club, in my opinion. And then we have one for Nenis, who is a 62 rated CDM. And he is our only backup in that position that is actually respectable. So we are not going to let him go either. So both of those transfer offers will be rejected. And we will keep on working on our team and keep on improving whatever we can within the squad. And I think we have done a really good job in today's episode. A very, very good epi in my opinion. And I enjoyed myself a lot. I hope you guys had a lot of fun as well. And I'm looking forward into the future of all Asuns. I want to see this team win the title. That would be great. From last to first. That is the goal that we have set ourselves now. And Mambimbi is up there with seven goals now. Beautifully done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited to come back tomorrow with another episode. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care and peace.